everyone. Welcome to Round Robin. I'm your host, Robin McCormick with the City of Hampton. And today we're going to take a look at the Virginia Air and Space Center. I think a lot of people drive by it and forget to go inside. So here's, uh, here's what's inside. My guest is Bob Griesmer, the director of the museum. Hello. Well, good morning. Thank you for having me. It is, I'm just going to start with, it is a beautiful, iconic building right there on the waterfront in downtown Hampton. Um, it, it's part of our skyline. It's important. Um, but people sometimes, maybe they've been inside once a few years ago, had a great experience, but don't know that they need to come back. Bob, why do they need to come back? Well, you've, you've hit on a very interesting spot, a, a point. The uh, Many people, uh, uh, especially air and space museums, sometimes will think, well, I've been there and I've done that, and why should I go back? But we have a lot of reasons to come back this summer. Uh, we have two new traveling exhibits uh, that are uh, just recently opened up, the robotic zoo. Uh, we have the uh, aviation aerospace maze, which is a 3,000 square foot maze for small children. Uh, alongside an outdoor cafe. It's outside. Oh, fun. Um, so the family can have a sandwich, have a, a beverage, uh, let the kids run into the maze, have fun. Um, we're much more focused uh, and are moving in the direction of, uh, of uh, smaller children for families that have small children to have a reason to come back. Look, we have this magnificent backdrop, so there's not too many places in the world that have an F-16 fighter plane hanging from a 95-foot ceiling. Um, and it is a mag magical, magical backdrop, theatrical backdrop, um, to being the NASA, official NASA visitor center with an IMAX screen that's five stories high and seven stories wide with one of the biggest screens in, uh, in Virginia and certainly in Hampton Roads. Um, and, and we have two fantastic films this summer. Uh, uh, we are partnered with the National Park Service here up the road in, in Jamestown uh, to bring... Uh, 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 National Park Adventure, Mc Greg McGilvery's National Park Adventure. I've been in, involved with the IMAX room uh, oh, world for 30 years. Oh, that sounds great. And they're celebrating, now I can't remember if it's this year or next year, but the 100th anniversary they, of the National Park Service. That's right. And what great timing. That, exactly. And we're, we're going to be on PBS with the National Park Service Ken Burns program this oh. summer. Uh, and uh, we're really excited about that. Uh, a beautiful planet, uh, another NASA IMAX space film from the International Space Station is showing Robots 3D. And our educators are going to be out on the floors doing STEM education for families and children uh, throughout every single day that we're open this summer. So it's the most robust experience that we've ever had in our, our 25 year history. Well, you know, one of the things I think from with the days when my kids were a little bit younger is they get something completely different out of that same experience every single time because as they grow they can absorb different things they can learn different you know sometimes it's just fun and they run around when they're little and maybe you teach them a little bit but as every single year they can absorb something new or or contribute you know to what they're learning in a different way yeah we've also opened up imagination playground with huge large lightweight blocks that are sometimes bigger than the kids themselves but they in order to build things they have to cooperate in teams just to lift them up and put them into place <laughs> that's and educational. we never and we never know what they're going to build it's all about uh, curiosity. It's about uh, investigating and exploring for children and their families, uh, as well as solving problems. And that's problem solving. Mm -hmm. um, and leadership. Uh, we, we watch kids assume leadership roles in teams and team building in Imagination Playground. It's a wonderful vehicle, a wonderful educational platform for, uh, for growth, for intellectual growth. And that's what STEM education is uh, uh, at the Virginia Air and Space Center. It's all about uh, finding and asking your own questions and finding your own solutions. I know that I used to um, plan my summer vacations to cities that had really good science museums or children's museums because it was so much fun yes. with the kids. Do you, do you get a lot of additional traffic in the summer from the region or from visitors? Yes, of course. You know, with Virginia Beach, um, uh, we do very well on days that it rains. If you're on the beach and you're uh, stuck in a hotel room or motel room with uh, kids, uh, 
what you need to do is come out to the Virginia Air and Space Center. Absolutely. Uh, uh, but also people at stay-at-home vacations. Not everybody's traveling large distances. So we, we have people from all over the country. And of course, the turnover from the military here brings people in from all over the country that stay for maybe a two-year tour of duty. So there's a lot of turnover uh, and a lot of reasons for us to be able to have a very robust July and August. And if the rain continues the way it has been, <laughs> it I'm going to tell you, we should have rainy. a banner summer. Um, well, and the other thing is we spent a lot of time talking about kids, but I was talking to um, one of the directors in the city who had a, a band of cousins in and, and a full house, and they spent, he yes. said, you know, I'll, I'll take them to the Air and Space Museum for a couple of hours. Um, they spent six hours there. Yes. I mean, they had a great time, the adults as well as the kids. Yes. And I think sometimes we all forget about that. If I'm rushing through worried about what my kids are learning, I don't get to read as much. I don't get to learn as much. No, that's right. And we know that, as a matter of fact. The research that's been done in, on free choice learning environments, we know that when you bring your kids, you subordinate your interests to that of your children, as opposed if you go with an adult family member or with a friend from uh, a girlfriend from college comes in from town, your behavior patterns are completely different. And we have to meet those needs as well, and we do. We have a cadre of volunteers, uh, some of whom have flown those planes that are hanging from the ceilings. Isn't that cool? And when the letters come in from these people, they say, we had the most extraordinary experience of any museum in our lives because of so-and-so who took us for a tour and the stories, because it's stories that are the compelling uh, um, reasons and, and, and the compelling things behind um, the artifacts that are in the institution. That's what makes it all relevant and fundamental. So how do you get those, because that's new. I mean, I don't remember there being, there were some maybe older kids who were helping the younger kids on some of the experiences, but your level of people out on the floor is really different. Oh, it has changed. It's always been there, but we're making it more robust. We're making it more formalized. There, there, there are tours that will leave with, you know, a seasoned, uh, retired individual who has all of these wonderful stories to tell um, because we've recognized that this is part of what makes the experience um, uh, 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 worthwhile. Now those stories may not be compelling to a, a four-year-old, four but, right, right. but um, you, know, uh, you know, just as the adults come in, um, uh, um, uh, in, the, in during the day, uh, with an 11, a 7, and a 4-year-old, they can't. You can't expect uh, them to check the 4-year-old with the coat in the coat room. Mm -hmm. So we have to provide a broad-based uh, experience that is uh, scalable and programmable to different age groups and different interests. Now, you you came from um, other museums. You have a museum background. How do we rate here? How do you compare the Air and Space Center in in, in Hampton to other museums you've worked with or seen? Well, so I started in, in Norwalk, Connecticut. I oversaw the construction and startup of the Maritime Aquarium. So it was a 100,000 square foot facility uh, dedicated to the species of Long Island Sound, an IMAX theater, and a maritime museum. And then went on to be the president and CEO of, of, uh, of a children's museum in West Hartford, Connecticut. So it's coming up on 30 years in, in this industry. Uh, but this facility um, is really awe-inspiring. I, I have to tell you that now that I've been here for about 20 months and we've been making changes with our business model and making sure that we're relevant and fundamental to uh, the community here and making the progress and the changes that we've been talking about this morning. Mm -hmm. um, but um, uh, when I walk in through the employee entrance and in the morning and the lights are still rather dim and we haven't opened up yet and I walk under that canopy uh, of history of the magnificent history of NASA's Langley Research Center and all the things that have happened through the Mercury and the Gemini and the Apollo 12 moon capsule um, and, and now the new Orion capsule that's on the floor. Um, you have a great sense of pride and history, which this community definitely has. Right. And I think that the architecture, the building, and the artifacts um, are equal to the passion uh, that Hamptonians have for uh, the Virginia Air and Space Center and for NASA Langley and the Langley Air Force Base and all the great things that originated in this community. I think that's what makes a museum successful in a lot of ways is if it's authentic. If, if you haven't taken something and, and stamped a copy of it in a city, but if you build what is the, the, the roots of that 
community. Yes. And, and that's what the Air and Space Center has done with both NASA and, um, and Langley. Yes, and, and, and in addition to, to that, we have a wonderful gift shop that we've totally re-merchandised, um, and we have summer camps uh, this summer, all focused around STEM, science, technology, engineering, and math. So, And that's a great, you know, even if Hampton families have been there before, if your kid has an interest in science or maybe doesn't have an interest in science and could. And could you know, it's or a, should. Yes, yes. Yeah. Kids, especially girls, sometimes close off to science at yes. a young age, which is a real tragedy. But you guys do it in a very different, fun, You know, what way. we are trying to communicate uh, to families and to the community and science centers in general is that in this day and age, uh, you don't have to be intimidated by science or you don't have to have an expectation that you're going to be a rocket scientist uh, in order to, to need the, the skill sets of uh, dealing with math and engineering. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know, manufacturing plants have robotics today. So you've got to be competent in these skill sets in order to get, you know, all different kinds of employment and jobs. The skill sets and the requirements for the today's marketplace about job creation and job uh, meeting the demands of the job market and keeping companies here is all part of what we're all working towards. The school systems, uh, the state, the Department of Education, uh, and free choice learning environments are all focused on making sure that we provide these resources to the community. In the final analysis, uh, beyond public education and private education, you know, I have a strong belief that uh, this is a original $30 million investment by the citizens of Hampton. 20, coming up next to April, 25 years ago, they made that decision to put this asset in play. And um, it should be utilized by the community. Um, we have doubled in the last uh, 12 months the number of children from Hampton Schools who have participated either in a program on our site or in an outreach program. Um, and uh, uh, we're involved in uh, just receiving a grant for uh, research in STEM. So we're, we're really, we're really uh, going to be at the forefront of free choice learning um, uh, progress and, and uh, and executing, uh, to, uh, executing research that will enable uh, uh, leaders to make uh, uh, decisions about resource allocations. I hope so, because I think one of the things that has hit the schools very, very hard are these standards of learning and, and a little bit of a, a, a fear or a panic that that learning has to be in the traditional classroom environment. And, you know, a lot of times field trips got cut, and, of course, that was cost as yes. well. And people forget that you you still learn, most kids still learn best when they participate, when it is active. You know, you learn science by doing labs, right. by those experimentation processes. And I'm glad to hear that, that you're increasing in that way. Yes, and when the research even goes further beyond that, it says that most uh, people who go to museums as adult go to museums and become free choice learners because they had an adult in their life that led them in that direction. Uh, and so we're very active in pursuing programs along these lines as well. In my particular case, it was, it was my maternal grandmother um, who dragged me through New York City to the Museum of Natural History and the Hayden Planetarium and up and down the Statue of Liberty and so on and so forth. So, um, you know, in a way, when you get to this point in your life, you think back in terms of what impacted you. Um, and it always usually comes back to that one teacher, that one adult. It could be a parent. It could have been a neighbor, anybody. But we really believe strongly in adult-child involvement in, in getting them excited about what's in their community and just being curious and, and, and trying to become problem solvers. It's so important in any career that, yeah. that people pick today and in their daily life as well. It's not just about our jobs. We're right. whole people, right? We are. And, and the demands of the workplace are, you know, are, going, are becoming more challenging every day. And, and we, don't want, uh, we don't want to lose another generation, do we? No, we absolutely don't. That's wonderful. So, Bob, in short, people should, should come this summer. I mean, what, what a great time it is. Your kids are out of school. Families have a little bit more time together. A lot of us, 
go to the museum pretty frequently for events. And so what we experience is the static displays. And we don't make it to the second floor. We don't get to do all that interactive stuff. So maybe the other thing is sometimes we ditch the kids <laughs> and come that, out, you know, as you said, with friends. That's right. Friends. There's many different ways that adults experience free choice learning environments. And, and it's whether it's other adults or adult family members or friends or, 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 uh, or colleagues, uh, or with their families, uh, um, there's plenty of ways to, to have an enjoyable day at the Virginia Air and Space Center. And, um, you know, we think this is the, probably the most robust uh, programming that we've done in, in many, many, many years. I won't judge before I came, but certainly since I've arrived, I'm very excited about uh, the amount of things to do for the range of ages that we're able to manage. Uh, and it will get better, uh, but this summer in particular, um, um, we are all out there attempting to invite people to return, give us a second look, think about becoming a member, because you only have to come twice a year, a uh, little under twice a year, in order to be able to come free for the rest. See, and that's so worth it for families, and absolutely. We and we changed our business model. Now the IMAX is free included in the price. So IMAX films are always changing, and and uh, we've 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 gone away for most part for the Hollywood productions. We brought Star Wars back. We'll be bringing Star Trek back this summer. Well, those um, have a particular appeal and connection to the museum. Oh yes, I mean on Star Wars on the seventeenth of December, they started to line up at ten o'clock in the morning in full <sighs> costume. I believe uh, it though. The, <laughs> they were, hey, I was around for the first Star Wars, yeah, you know, back in the day. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so we were um, we were pleased to do that. We're pleased to be able to bring things back that are thematically consistent, mm -hmm. but we we're really getting back to our roots about about doing the things that we that we think are important. You know, um, you can't be you can't be excellent in all things. Yeah. So we really focused on we want to be exceptional in what it is that we are, and we are a first class science museum uh, dedicated to telling the stories of the. Of, of NASA and, and its history and talking about the things that it will be doing in the future as it takes us to Mars and the outer planets and we uh, explore uh, new horizons on civil aviation that they've been exploring over their 100 years. You know, it's this 100 years of 100 years of the National Park Service, 100 years of NASA Langley. Um, 100 Na years of Langley Air Force Na Base. Na yes, what a, what a, what a in vibrant, incredible history in Hampton Roads to have all of that here. And we're very proud to showcase um, so much of that because, you know, in, in this day and age, you can't get onto the bases as much anymore. Right, and right. It's more You're limited. the official site. You are the visitor's center. So we're proud to be able to tell that story. Thank you. Thank you so much well, for coming. Thank you and re energizing we look to people. And I'll be coming back very Good. soon. Good. Thank we'll you. We'll see you there. And I hope to see you also at the Virginia Air and Space Center this summer or later. Um, remember, it is history, it is local, it is science, it is flight, it is space. There's so much to learn and do and enjoy there for people of all ages. Thanks for watching.